It's Mark from the United States. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Mark from the States, how are we doing today? I am doing fantastic. I hope you are as well. Thank you so much for coming. Come sit on this big fake couch with me today. We're going to learn something. At least I am. Uh, thank you to all of you who are coming back and hanging out with me. I just absolutely love that you do. Uh, we are back with Tweety Pubs. You know, it's well known. If you have been a regular of this, of our channel, uh, I love pubs. I have this fascination with pubs. I want to, of course, we have pubs here. They're nothing like the original pubs that you have. Um, they're just sort of trying to emulate and copy what you all have over there. So I am so excited uh, for when I get to come visit. 2025, uh, that will hopefully include a lot of stops at a lot of different pubs. It would be ideal. Uh, my friend John over at Tweety Pubs, love his video that we did on the pubs of Fleet Street. I just love the history that he presents and all the little tidbits that, uh, you know, that probably, I would imagine, a lot of people don't know about. They just go into these places, have their beverage of choice, and uh, and then be on their merry way uh, without really knowing where they are. And that is one of the things about the pubs that I love is the history of them. And there's so much of it. Uh, so today's video is the, let's see here, Devereux Court off the Strand, London's shortest distance historic pub crawl. That's the name of the video. Please go support Tweety Pubs. Of course, the link and description um, to this video and his channel will be in the description. Uh, I encourage you, if you haven't already, to go over there, like, subscribe, do the things uh, that I know you all do. Uh, be kind, and uh, uh, you guys are just amazing. Amazing. So, without further ado, I'm going to learn something, and I just dig it. Been looking forward to this. And, you know, he had me, of course, at pub crawl. I'm thinking, shortest distance pub crawl? Perfect. So, all right, let's do it. Welcome to another Tweety Pubs video. This, I suppose, could be seen as a follow-on to my previous video, where I was looking at the perhaps more famous pubs of Fleet Street. I've crossed past the old... Uh, we'll, we'll go. I didn't know this was like uh, maybe the part, the next video after maybe. I don't know. That's cool. Good timing. Good timing. Famous pubs of Fleet Street. I've crossed past the old location of the Temple Bar, now no longer in the city of Thank London. Thank you for all of you who of Westminster. explained to and me what that was. What today I think is a very interesting little cluster of pubs, most of them on or immediately adjoining this small back street or alleyway called Devereux Court. City of Westminster. It's just off the Strand, and although perhaps some of these pubs are not as famous as their near neighbours on Fleet Street, I think there's a lot of very interesting history condensed into this little corner of London, so um, let's go take a look. Pub number one, the Devereux. Cheers from the Devereux. So the Devereux, of course, takes its name from the court on which it finds itself, this little alleyway, this little... I like the building. The it's nice. The corner of Devereux Court, where the Devereux pub stands, it has immediately opposite an entrance into Middle Temple. This site was originally oh. occupied cool. by the Grecian Coffee House, which moved here in 1677, and that was frequented by such dignitaries as Sir Isaac Newton and Haley of Haley's Comet fame, okay. and also Sir Hans Sloane. Another famous Sir visitor Hans. of the early 18th century was oh, wow. Sarah, or sometimes known as Crazy Sally Mapp, the bone setter. Now, Sarah, or Sally Mapp, was quite a celebrity in her day. And um, Crazy Sally Mapp, the bone setter. And that was not a flattering caricature. <laughs> 
of this person. Oh, wow. Uh, so, Isaac Newton, uh, Haley from Haley's Comet. Not quite sure I understand that, but... And then uh, Sloan. So, I'm going to have to look up Sloan as well, or maybe he'll... He'll get into that person and their history too. But um, so far, just the outside looks amazing. Um, and it's, it certainly one of the reasons why our pubs, <laughs> bars uh, that are trying to be a pub, aren't aren't as you know exciting as the actual thing is their location. You know, you find a lot of them in strip malls and places that are just kind of, they're out of place. Here you have these little back alley, back little small streets, you know, they're just, gives it so much more. It's not just what's inside, it's also on what's outside. And uh, I love the look of the building. It's really neat. And hopefully we're going to go into this uh, bone setter of a person. Sounds nice was famed for curing various bone-related ailments in her patients, but often also derided later as a quack doctor <laughs> depicted in Sounds William like. Hogarth's engraving of 1736, titled The Company of Undertakers, along with other well-known quack doctors of the age. Her fame grew particularly after curing Sir Hans Sloane's niece of a spinal deformity. Subsequently, she was regaled in both having a play that was performed at Lincoln's Inn Fields, partly named after her or, or based on her, and also had a racehorse named after her. Devereux Court is named after Robert Devereux, the second Earl of Essex, and it was the one-time uh. location of Essex House, which was demolished in order to build this street and the houses on it. Robert Devereux, huh. the second Earl of Essex, was at one time a favorite of Queen Elizabeth I, but eventually fell out of favor. He in fact mounted a failed coup d'etat and the oh. it was here at Essex House. And the building that we see today in the form of the Devereux occupying part of its former site is from the 1840s. It is listed, Historic England have some notes on it. It's stucco faced, has a very rusticated frontage, very heavily rusticated coins at the corner. Georgian style windows, there is a bust of Robert Devereux, the Earl of Essex. The sign for the pub has the coat of arms of the Devereux family. I think it's possibly a later version of the coat of arms as used by Price Devereux, who was the ninth Viscount Hereford. Inside, I'm not sure that there's really a lot in terms of- Does original not look original. <laughs> to look at. The pub was closed for a while, I think from roughly around 2016, reopened in 2019. Oh, bad timing. Any pub that's undergone a period of closure in recent years and a subsequent refurbishment, there is a fair amount of turquoisey, gastro pubby, pharaoh ball type paint. But I think what they have done quite nicely is to create little booths with hardwood partitions partially glazed as well. The freezers along the ceiling could be a bit older, I'm not sure they certainly don't go all the way back to the 1840s, but they could be from an earlier refurbishment on the pub. Also some quite attractive carved brackets, although the state of the wood makes me think that they're actually relatively modern. There are a few historical prints on the walls, including there is. some showing the local area, the Temple Bar, the Royal Courts of Justice and the Strand. Today it's effectively an independent pub, although Canberra's what pub site describes the operator as the Little Teapot Taverns Company. I think that may be just a, a pub co that effectively owns this sole pub i couldn't find any other pubs owned by them i'm drinking uh this, this is actually a, a green king beer but it's a seasonal green king beer i don't think i've seen before their sort of winter ale um and i would say that's much nicer than most green king beers that's actually quite pleasant sort of brown and nutty pub number two so that was okay i mean i i love the building yeah it, it's obviously uh been remodeled and kind of updated so the inside, I mean, the outside, this is one of those pubs to me that the outside looks better than the inside. But, yeah, it's not that I wouldn't go. It looked like it was kind of out of the way, too. It was like, uh, unless you really knew where you were going, uh, maybe you wouldn't find, you know, 
it's not on the main drag or whatever, but I, I just left that story about this crazy Sally map. It's just the bone setter. Oh, gosh, it's just those old quack doctors, as John put it, just horrific sounding nicknames, bone setter. Uh, man. Um, but yeah, I would totally go. Sure. Why not? <laughs> I love it. It's immediately opposite the Royal Courts of Justice, but it is also facing on to George. Deborah Court. It is the George. Cheers from the George. And this pub, according to the plaque outside, 1723. was established in 1723. Also a coffee house. As another coffee house. So there's a real cluster of those coffee houses here in and around Devereux Court. It was originally known as George's Coffee House. And then later, at some point in the 19th century, was renamed to the George Hotel. But it continued to use the name George's Coffee House, even when it was functioning as a hotel slash pub. And I found a, a really charming newspaper advert from 1844, extolling all the virtues of the hotel slash pub at that time. Still haven't quite worked out what coffee a la tronso means. Any ideas? I also found uh. another ad from around the same period. The very earliest newspaper records I could find mentioning George's Coffee House at this location were from 1749 and an account Dang. of some rampaging sailors who went around causing damage to some of the local hostelries. While we're on the subject <laughs> of coffee houses, it's interesting to note that the first tea room was established just around the corner from here in 1706 on the Look strand at that. number 216 by a Mr. Twinings, who we still know today as the brand Twinings Tea. And in fact, the family home, I believe for several generations of the Twinings family, was here in Devereux Court. And there are various newspaper articles to attest to that. The plaque also suggests that Samuel Johnson was a regular here and even used it curiously as his postal address for it. Yeah. <laughs> he had his mail delivered there. Uh, Samuel Johnson, I think, uh, sounds like he visited a lot of uh, a lot of drinking establishments for sure. But I just love that he got his mail there. Uh, it's a public house. Uh, let's see here. Founded in 1723 as a coffee house became George's Hotel in 1830, I guess. And then a public house as it is today. Public house. Another name for pub, right? Pub. Public house. There we go. I see how it all works. For, it all came together for me. Former regulars of the George include Horace Wallace. Oliver Goldsmith and Samuel Johnson, who for a while used the George as his postal address. Another of the frequent companies was the con man Henry Perfect, who was fond of personating vicars. Now, uh, we don't use the term vicar here, um, pastor, you know, um, I think is our comparable, I guess, maybe. Um, May, at least if they do say vicar, I don't know over here. I i don't go to church, so um, I, I, I'm not an expert on that. And is said to have often rented rooms upstairs, although the design of the building appears to be 18th century. In fact, uh, late Victorian, even the reproduction half known and it's starting to get a little harder to read but uh yeah it sounds like samuel johnson probably frequented a lot of pubs but if you're gonna get your mail delivered here it sounds like you were here quite a bit <laughs> i love it though i want to have my mail delivered to a pub that would be great a regular here and even used it curiously as his postal address for a time not sure if there is any truth in that looking at mm. the exterior that we love see the today, outside the facade is Looks very cool. much mock tudor absolutely screams it mock it's not a listed tudor. building but there are two photos you can find on the historic england website the transition that happened from 1926 
when this was still very much a sort of probably Victorian era pub type building to 1928 when it took on this very elaborate mock Tudor facade. I wonder comparing those two photos if the columns at the frontage, particularly one at the corner, may have been preserved. And it looks today as though there is a more modern casing around a much older piece of stonework underneath. And you can just about see a gap in that wooden casing, that mm. mock Tudor frontage is a real joy to behold. I love there that. Are two carvings of jolly friars Portrait with above beer barrels there. at either corner of oh, the yeah. front window. There is also a carving, again gilded like those jolly friars, running along the transom of the window with impish figures that are slightly reminiscent of Bayer tapestry type figures oh, running wow. along chasing various farm animals. So the building is not listed. We don't have any information from Camera's Pub Heritage team. A little bit hard to date some of the interior features. There is a nice line of composite columns along the bar back. They could possibly date to the 1920s. I'm not sure they're entirely in keeping with I love the, the inside though. I mean, I love the inside. It looks like it's got some modern amenities, Wi-Fi, maybe air conditioning. Um, it had a big screen TV, um, which is what every bar here in the States pub has, um, seems like. Um, so, I mean, it would be weird to go into a bar or a pub here in the States that didn't have multiple, multiple big screen TVs. I mean, even if they're not even playing sports, you know, it's very, very rare. Um, so it does take away uh, a place, you know, it adds or detracts from the ambiance. But uh, the inside here looks, I love it. I think it's cool. Um, but it does look like it's been recreated for that, at least in my opinion. I don't know. Mock Tudor type themes, so possibly Mock they could Tudor. be older. Another feature that really stood out to me is the fireplace towards the back of the pub on the ground floor, which has some very nice carving. It's a very prominent face sticking out at the front, and it's flanked by oh, yeah. two swags. Again, that could possibly be 1920s work. I'm not really sure if it's in keeping with Mock Tudor stylistically, though. There is actually quite a lot of interesting wood carving, hard to date it. If you look at one of the side doors, it has a sort of gothic arch to the window in it, and that has some nice carving over it's the It's amazing arch. that there he notices this stuff. There around as just... well, uh, uh, have some nice wood carving. There's a little bit of interest to uh, the first floor. It's somewhat cool. more modernized, the, uh, the dining area now. Oh. But there is a room at the front facing out onto the Strand, looking across to the Royal Courts of Justice. It's got some wow. quite nice stained glass. It's a glass nice view. There. I suspect Look it's at more that. modern. Uh, but that gives some nice views across to the Royal Courts of Justice. Heck yeah. At the end of that room, there is a actually quite old looking cabinet there. I'm not sure what they're using to keep it. So I wonder if it's got sort of a TV or something inside it now. But uh, I wonder if that may actually be older than that probable 1927 remodeling. It's operated by the Metropolitan brand today, which I think is one of these sub brands, if that's the right word, of Green King. I have to say, the it, the lineup on the bar I thought was very impressive. There were, um, is it going into double figures almost the number of hand pumps? Some of them devoted to cider rather than beer. And there are at least three or four right things on there that I thought I would actually quite like to try. So, um, and f from my point of view at least, a really quite impressive lineup of hand pumps and, uh, and real ales on offer. I went for the, is it called the Headless Cavalier or Headless Chevalier, something like that, which is their sort of house bitter. Um, it's, Pretty nice, it could well, who knows, be something rebadged from Green King. Um, but there certainly were a lot of other breweries other than Green King represented there. And I assume this particular pub brand, Metropolitan, I haven't encountered this much before. I assume they have quite a lot of free reign in the running of the pub. I would have to say overall, I was very pleasantly surprised by the George. I think I'd been in here years and years ago and remember it being, well, I remember it being not particularly memorable, uh, but perhaps I wasn't uh, paying attention to some of the finer details. There are some nice elements to the interior today and certainly the, uh, the beer lineup is a bit more interesting than I think a lot of pubs in this part of London. So uh, well done to the George. I love how he uh, points out just the minor details, the, the wood carvings, the the, uh, the joists, the 
the trim of the inside. I just, I find it fascinating. Um, even though it, it's not like authentic, authentic, the view that you have from across the street, uh, looking at the justice, uh, building there. Oh man, that is nice. And another cool thing about a lot of your pubs are multi-story. Uh, that, <laughs> that is, you know, you don't see that here at all. Um, just really cool. I love the fact that you can go upstairs, even, even to a third floor, even. It's just uh, really cool. Really, really cool. Pub number three, the Edgar Wallace. Cheers from the Edgar Wallace. Edgar it's been Wallace. Pub here apparently since at least 1777, and its former name was the Essex Head. It was renamed in 1975 to the Edgar Wallace to celebrate the centenary of the great crime writer. I believe Edgar Wallace wrote over 170 novels in his lifetime. In wow. its guise as the Essex Head, this probably has one of the strongest connections or the most credible connections with Dr. Johnson of any pub in the of area. Course. In the video on <laughs> Fleet Street, the old Cheshire Cheese on Fleet Street is famously mm -hmm. associated with Dr. Johnson, but it was interesting that he himself never mentioned it in any of his writings, nor did either of his biographers. However, here at the Essex Head, there is written evidence that mm. Johnson was here in the form of a letter that he wrote to Joshua Reynolds about the Essex Head Club. Johnson had various clubs that he was, literary yeah. salon type clubs that he was a member of during his time, but this was a club that he set up in possibly the final year of his life, around 1783. Dr. Johnson also described the terms of this club. He wrote that they were lax and the expenses light. The members met thrice a week and he who missed attendance forfeited twopence. Dr. Brocklesby, who I believe was Samuel Johnson's physician in later life, was the co-founder of the club. And it was also revived again in the 1850s as attested by this newspaper article you're now looking at. It was rebuilt. In the I love the outside 90s. here. I love the outside here. It looks kind of a classic look um, with, the, with the name of the, of the pub, uh, you know, in big letters on the, on the, uh, outside here those type of windows i just in the streets <laughs> these are all things that all of you probably are like yeah you know don't even think twice about but for me who doesn't uh see this sort of thing maybe in some of the older cities in uh, back east they have a lot more of this sort of thing but uh for me this is really new and it's probably you know silly to even say it out loud but i just love the look of the streets the buildings the just of course we learned about postal codes i love the signs um uh, it's just man i can't wait to get there um and this is definitely a place that i would be draw drawn into um one of the things also is uh the pub names um a lot of history there um, but you know, they just, these names of the Edgar Wallace or George, you know, um, if I'm just, uh, walking along and I see that, I mean, it doesn't really tell me it's a pub, you know, right off the bat, just by hearing the name of the place. Um, which is why I think it's pretty awesome. <laughs> I just the the names of the pubs are so awesome <laughs> and uh some of them are pretty wild but yeah this is a definite thumbs up for me right here and of course you know i mean you should just do a pub crawl that every pub samuel johnson went to and that would that would probably be a lot of pubs I suspect at least some of the structure we see today dates from them. Quite a distinctive really? frontage, which is currently painted green, but I think has had various different color schemes, at least during the time that I have known it. It has half-fluted pilasters. Between those, some rather attractive 
square paned windows. I think the frames I are love those wooden, windows. And they are gilded as well, the, uh, the gilded paint. So it's not a nice contrast of colours there between the, uh, the green of the majority of the exterior and these sort of um, gilded window frame panes inside the pub. It's hard to tell whether any of the current fixtures and fittings date back to that 1890s rebuild. That's but it awesome. Is an absolute visual. My fit. gosh. Either the current landlord or a previous landlord has festooned the walls and ceiling with all sorts of beer and tobacco related memorabilia and memorabilia for other drinks, uh, brewery, livery, uh, advertising material and so on. And it's a, a real, um, Aladdin's cave of wow. memorabilia and assorted other knickknacks. It's also incredibly quiet inside, wonderfully so, absolutely no piped music. And as I arrived, there were only a, a few other customers there. So I really felt like I was a bit of a nuisance standing in the middle, um, taking little bits of video for you to see here. So that's why the shots of the interior are a bit brief. Sorry about that. I think it's generally usually quite well regarded for the beer selection. Um, I wonder if I hit it at a slightly bad time because there just seem to be three hand pumps on. Um, but, you know, the, I'm having some landlord and it's in perfectly good condition. Timothy Taylor's landlord, this is pretty nice. So yes, I think that is a little gem of a pub. Has it a is, it's so cool. To it as well. I think it is uh, a, an independent ran pub. Very unique and quirky. And I just love how you can just sit right outside like this. So we this. are in fact going to be leaving to the bounds of Devereux Court, which is, uh, you know, for a back street of London, it has provided three pubs. I think that's fantastic. We're not going very far for the final pub. You can probably see it behind me now, just across Essex Street over there on Little Essex Street, pub number four, the Cheshire Cheese. Cheers what? from the Cheshire Cheese. This is, of course, not to be confused with the old Cheshire Cheese on Fleet Street. There's now, a second a one? Listed pub. I think the listing is a relatively recent one as well. It's 2015 oh, historic England site that there has been a pub on this site going back to at least 1791. I can do ever so slightly better than that. Not much. Sun Fire Office insurance records going back to 1789. The owner at that time was one George Careless, who does sound like the sort of person who needs fire insurance. The <laughs> earliest newspaper article I could find dates to 1814. This pub is, of course, often confused with Looks its more cool, famous though. nearby almost namesake pub, the yeah. Old Cheshire Cheese, which is probably only a four or five minute walk um, away from here on Fleet Street. There were at least five pubs in the 18th the Cheshire century Cheshire around this part of London, not immediately as close street. as this one, called the Cheshire Cheese. So it was obviously a very common name. The dictionary of okay. pub names, usually a very reliable source, gives a slightly somehow unsatisfying explanation of why pubs are called that. And it says that they're simply named after the cheese. Well, of course they're named after the cheese and uh, adds a note it's a good accompaniment as a bar snack for beer cheshire cheese as a cheese is in fact one of the oldest recorded british cheeses the earliest reference is 1580 it was the most popular cheese on the market in the late 18th century it gets a mention in peeps's diaries the current building is of a very similar age to that rebuilt Upstairs meeting room, hail wine bar. Wine bar, love that. That is cool. That is very nice. That is, <laughs> I love it. That is very In nice. In Peeps's diaries, the current building is of a very similar age to that rebuild of the George just around the corner. Uh -huh. It dates to 1928 and it's in a neo-Georgian style. I think probably what most people will pick out as one of the more notable features are these windows. And just a quote uh -huh. from that historic England listing, they are made up of 21 small leaded panes over three larger plate glass panes, except above the rolling indoors where the larger plate glass panes were not installed. It's quite a dry explanation, uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, attractive leaded. I'm going back, sorry. It's quite a dry of the rolling indoors where the larger plate glass panes were not installed. It's quite a dry okay. explanation, isn't it? But uh, okay. attractive leaded bay windows. Yeah, so they're really cool. In looking. addition to the historic England listing, it is on 
camera's inventory of historic pub interiors. In fact, it's the only one of today's pubs that makes it onto that list. And they give it a whopping three star rating, which is their highest category. The main bar area that we see today on the ground floor would originally have been split into two sections, a public bar and a saloon bar. And you can still see the signage on one of the doors for the saloon. Nice. The bar back is of carved oak with leaded mirror panels, more leading there. There is an intriguing cabinet-like structure to the right near the bar counter. And that is apparently a cask lift. It's there to help the barrels get in and out of the cellar. And the reason for that is that the cellar is in fact two stories beneath the ground. I'm not entirely sure in its wow. current guise whether the excitement that normally goes with a camera pub heritage three-star interior feels entirely merited. I mean, a lot of the, the additions are, are temporary ephemeral things like sort of fairy lights. And there is unfortunately a big screen TV in there. So those things- Unfortunately, really <laughs> somehow through the current state, spoiling the permanent interior permanent left me feeling a bit underwhelmed. Interior fixtures and fittings. They don't seem to currently be serving any real ale. There are hand pumps there, but they're all fairly semi-permanently by the looks of things oh, turned, bummer. Off and turned off uh, so i'm just having um, uh, half a guinness uh, instead which is which is fine okay well that's it from me for today a bit more of a, a low-key video than the last couple perhaps i don't think any of these pubs are hugely famous or well known but i do think um, if you're looking in london for a place to do a pub crawl with very little walking in between <laughs> still some interesting historic pubs to explore and I think you'll be hard pushed to do better than Devereux Court and the immediately surrounding area just off the Strand. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that's been enjoyable and or informative and I will see you on the next one. As an experiment, it. I'm going to start a stopwatch on my phone and see how long it takes me to get past all four of these pubs walking at a leisurely pace. Go. Cheshire cheese there. What are we at? 10 seconds. Walking down Little Essex Street here. There's Edgar Wallace. Crossing over Essex Street. The corner of the Edgar Wallace, 30 seconds in. Now walking down one end of Devereux Court. This and is Devereux just Court right here. To the Devereux. Or Devereux. Should we <laughs> see where we are when we're at the door? Okay, at the doorway to the Devereux, 55 seconds. And now, what's the fourth one? George, right? We've indulgently used. An entire minute now. Still walking along Devereux Court. Three pubs down, one to go. There is in fact a, uh, a back entrance onto Devereux Court from the George, which we're just coming up to now. One minute 25. There, there you go. go. That was a particularly fast walk. Less than a minute and a half of walking there, and you can come So all up. Four pubs. Mm. Definitely want to see the Soho Pub video. Please go support John and Tweety Pubs and his all his videos. I love these. My gosh, um, I want to watch them, but I also want to watch them with you. And and uh, so I've been. I, I definitely want to watch the Soho Pub one for sure. Um, I just, uh, God, I'm just fascinated by the history and. I gotta see if he's done any videos outside of London in other pubs in other towns, or is it just London? I've got to ask him uh, if he's done others. Uh, John, if you're out there, let me know. Email me and say, yeah, I have uh, that. I'm planning on doing something outside of London, or uh, I just need to go through every look through all his videos. I, I've gotten through some. Um, and I just love them, you know, and some of them I watch them all. Oh man, this would have been a good one. That's why I'm like hesitant about just watching all of his videos, which I totally would. Um, but I also, if it's a, a cool video to, to watch, I, you know, I've heard of the strand. 
I, I saw a pub crawl, and I was like, shortest historic pub crawl. You can't go wrong. That's the problem. Or that's not a problem. That's actually a good thing. Uh, you can't go wrong with any of his videos. They're just going to be full of history and pubs. And what's better than that? I don't know. Be hard pressed to find something better than that. Anywho, uh, again, go support his channel. I hope everybody's happy, healthy, and uh, safe. And we'll see you in the next one. Yes. Uh, quick reminder, though, before we go, uh, I have my conversation with Magic Geekdom this Sunday. Please get questions in on our channel uh, community page or email me. Uh, my email will be in the description of every video. Uh, so email me with some questions or thoughts or comments that you would like for me to pass along to Karen Jeremy. Um, I'm excited for this uh for this opportunity to talk to him and uh yeah let's find out uh what y'all have all right everyone take care we'll see you in the next one bye mark from the states mark from the states it's mark